It sounds silly, but I knew I wanted to design furniture when I was 15. I saw it in a career guide that interior designers sometimes design furniture, and I went, yep, that's what I want to do. It started with focusing on furniture, but very rapidly started looking at the interiors that those furniture pieces were in. I'm actually really proud of the fact that all of the interiors we've always done have got custom furniture in them. There's not ever been one where we've just specified all the furniture out of a catalogue and that was the extent of it. There's always been a piece where you can't find it, what's out there is not right, and we've ended up putting our own kind of furniture stamp into an interior job. We do custom furniture, interiors and product. We always have commercial work on the go and we always have residential work and the proportions vary. And sometimes it could be 70, 30, one way and then the other. Products come from gaps that we've seen in the market and we know they're there because on interiors, people have said, we can't find a bar stool. We've looked everywhere, they're too expensive, they're too this, they're too that. And so we've designed a specific stool that works really well at a bar. It's got a single pedestal so when you look along the front of a bar, it doesn't look too cluttered. The interiors that I did initially, there was lots of domestic things, but now there's lots of commercial work as well. I really like the blend of what happens when you're working on commercial and residential. Uh, I guess in the sense that residential is always a much more personal um, relationship and you're working on somebody's home that they might have forever or it might be a 10 year house but no matter what you know that they're going to live in that space. But I really like the variety that you get in commercial work and that no job's the same and that quite often commercial work is more I guess bold in that sense that commercial clients want their work to look different to somebody else's. The commercial work that we've done in the past has got a huge variety and it has been um, things from um, libraries. Librarians by their nature are really good information sharers, which is fantastic for us. And they've been quite happy to refer us on to other libraries in the network. And then we've done other things like uh, a couple of different retail fit outs, which all have huge varieties about them. of different post offices. They're really interesting because there are rules that you have to work with, but I guess in some ways it's no different to any other job. There's always going to be a practical requirement. We do make sure that um, we're talking to the end users as well who are actually in the space day to day, interacting with the furniture that we've built we need to know, do they need a filing cabinet down there? How do they do their job? What doesn't work for them in the space at the moment? And what would make their job easier down the track? It is interesting that there is a, a similarity about all jobs, re regardless of whether they're commercial or residential. The start of any job for us is we work out what the brief is, so what the requirements are for the job. And then from there, we try to think as laterally as possible. The process gets more and more refined and the drawings get more and more developed throughout a job, but they all start the same way as in, you need to think about the atmosphere and you need to think about the practical requirements. And for us, it's always a really interesting process because we're coming into it fresh. What we need from clients is we need to know what they're after, but we don't need the answers. 
to me it's a process and we're there to help and support people to figure out what that answer is. This is an example of a really good relationship with clients. Tanya and Lockie are really friendly people. Um, they knew what they wanted. They already had an aesthetic, which as you can see is, is really lovely and warm. And from that, we worked really closely. Tanya's a chef by trade, so we worked really closely down to, we knew where the glad wrap drawer was before this kitchen was even came off the paper. The lovely thing about it was Lockie owns the auction room, so he has access to all this fantastic vintage furniture. So we did a selection from what they had. So it was really collaborative in that sense. I had an idea about a screen and that's how it started. I, I wanted to screen off my kitchen from the living area in an interesting manner to house a collection of ours. And I, I, can't, I knew that I needed help. There was, I couldn't walk into a kitchen shop and just order that. Our hairdresser Marie happened to be showing photos of her newly renovated kitchen um, very proudly and I loved the work. And my husband Lachlan also shares that hairdresser and we both thought, right, if anyone's going to be able to do what we want, um, it would be Julie. So she gave us Julie's number and uh, that was it, I made the call. We get almost all of our work from referrals. Referrals are really important. It's that sort of level of trust already. We were very aware we've got two little uh, rough and tumble children. So little things like we're, we're obviously collectors of kind of mid-century furnishings and it just wasn't appropriate to have those things around us at that time. So Julie helped us with a couch, for example, so we, we got her to design a absolute bulletproof, kid-proof, animal-proof couch, which still suited our style, it looks amazing. Four years on, it still looks as good as it did when it arrived. She also helped us source chairs. It's very lived in this space and it handles all the knocks it gets every day. Being able to access a whole lot of different materials um, that perhaps aren't really available to the average person walking in to a, you know, a kitchen place or a flooring place. So designers, they know how to get stuff, really good stuff. <laughs> so To us, it's really important um, that we're aware of the materials out there, but at the same point, it's, we also need to be selective. There's a lot of things on the marketplace which kind of flood the marketplace place that we don't want to go near. We want to make sure that what we're doing for clients is, um, I guess, really specific and customised for them. It's not a trend. And to ironically, to do that, you have to know what the trends are so you can avoid them. I initially was frightened, oh, a designer, that costs lots of money. And, but what we spent on the designer certainly saved us heaps, not only in... In, in problems and in, in trying to deal with and coordinate different trades, but it actually saved us money, I think, in the end, because we got what we wanted. It was an easy process. She walked in with an idea she, 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 made, she made it way better and, and it, it, it is exactly what we wanted in the end and it was really enjoyable working with her. I guess part of our role in the process is, is to act as a guide and, and to help people through that process. It's whatever the job needs. Sometimes that's from clients' requests but sometimes that's from a particular field that we're trying to create. I guess the advantages of somebody using a designer on a job is to, to me, it, it, maybe it sounds counterintuitive, but I think it saves the money. 
because it means that everything that is done in the space is really carefully considered.